ausgehe, Thomas Gard is a professor in managerial economics and optimization at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, another one of the seven enhanced partners. His research focuses on energy transition strategies and energy policy. He is, among many other things, the director of FME Entrance, Norwegian Center for Energy Transition Strategies, and the NTNU Energy Transition Initiative. He is on the Climate Advisory Board for the Norwegian Minister of Climate and Environment. And again, there is so much more to say about him, but it's time for me to give Oskar Thomas got the floor for his short presentation on multidisciplinary research at the intersection of technology and social sciences. So exactly where we just were. Please, Professor Thomas Gard, go ahead. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and, and being able to participate in this dialogue. And um, I have uh, selected some, uh, some ideas from one of these research centers that I'm involved in, the Norwegian Center for Energy Transition Strategies. And I'll try to focus on uh, on on uh, bringing this into into to the scope that you have defined in terms of how can universities of technology contribute uh, and and where must technical and social innovations go hand in hand. And I'm focusing most on on research, but I think this is as important when we discuss how to create the education system of uh, of the future. So I hope we can also come back to that during the the the, the panel discussions. And um, uh, the research design of this research center is going on for the next five, six years. And, and in 2018, we tried to gather together in some roundtable discussions, all the stakeholders that we are working with in, in public offices and uh, industry. And, and we asked them some, some trick questions related to what are the most important topics in, in your in organization when you want to when you want to move towards a zero emission or climate neutral society. And, and this outer circle contains, uh, contains the, the topic areas that I chose. And remember, this is uh, focusing on the energy transition, but we realized very quickly that the energy transition is not about transitioning the energy system. It's about how the energy system can help transitioning the rest of the society. And you look at energy production, infrastructures, prosumers, consumers, smart cities, industry, transport. And, and you realize that the future energy system is very much about the interfaces between technologies and the social sciences and innovation, if this is going to, to happen. Then next we asked uh, these, these uh, stakeholders, what are the most important drivers to, to manage this change in your organization? And uh, sustainability naturally came out on the top. Digitalization as one of the enabling technologies, the need for radical innovation and disruption, and continued value creation as we do the, the, the transition to, to a zero emission society. And uh, based on that, we tried to put up an uh, eight year research program in, in uh, transition of society. And uh, I think that the multidisciplinary research that you find in the borders between technology and social sciences is essential to create transitions. Uh, and, and I think it's important that uh, hair size engage the public, but I think it's it maybe even more important that the public takes ownership to the transition and that you, that you have the needed innovation potential to disrupt. And I think the way you look at innovation will change when you realize that the citizens take ownership of the transition processes as compared to the relative passive notion that we had 10 years ago where the citizens would accept the transition. And I think that there's a lot of interesting uh, thinking to do in, 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 in that, these links, going from the passive accept via engagements to the citizens taking ownership to transitions. And um, if you look at the, the energy system uh, and, and how it affects um, the rest of society, I think some of the examples of potential disruptions that we hope to see would be the need to manage to have negative emissions, how to withdraw. Uh, CO2 from the atmosphere and in not too many years ahead. How to move the whole wind industry out in the oceans using offshore wind. How to replace fossil fuels in heating industry and transport with clean fuels like hydrogen. Possibly coming from, from natural gas using carbon capture and storage, but in any way you need the fuels to be clean. And, and for sure, these depend on technological development. They depend on, on uh, new technological breakthroughs. But so many of the key success factors are 
social disruptions that need to, to happen in parallel. And I come back to that in my summarizing slide. But first, I would like to say something about how we designed uh, this uh, research program around the interfaces between different types of systems, and for sure between uh, ecological systems, human systems, and technological systems. So one of the first areas that we focused on was the deep decarbonization and how that would move into societal change. And uh, if you look at this, it means that the energy system will transition in order for transport to transition, in order for industry to transition, and in, for, in order for the buildings uh, to become zero emission. And, and to, to manage this, you would need uh, to understand the systems that involve both humans and technologies and the interfaces between those. And I think technological universities with strong social sciences is in a very good position to address these complex issues. And, and you can see it within, uh, within uh, a number of these, these areas that, uh, for example, understanding why conflicts arise and how to, to solve these conflicts. And I think that's rooted in, in the increased understanding that uh, these transitions will happen more smoothly when the humans take ownership, when the citizens take ownership to the transitions are just not passive actors in, in the transition. And uh, it's also related to the second, uh, second uh, research component, which is accelerating the transition. When we started this, we invited some of the leading innovation researchers around the world to a workshop in Trondheim, and, and we asked them, so how long does a does uh, radical innovation take? How long does a disruptive innovation take? And I said, well, historically, it's taken between 40 and 50 years. And that's quite depressive when you look at the climate challenge. If you would imagine that all the solutions that will help us to reach the zero emission society were on research desks 20 to 30 years ago, that's really depressive. So you need to look at how could we accelerate these disruptive transitions. And, and our hypothesis is that this will happen in the interfaces between researchers, industry, public government, policymakers, and also the financial institutions that's going to fund this transition. And if you get all these groups together, maybe we can do this much, much faster. And, and of course, being an economist myself, it's difficult not to mention the energy markets in, uh, in this. And I think that's, again, uh, pointing to the consumers and, and, uh, and the citizens. How can we get consumers to more actively participate in markets and make the markets more flexible? And then it comes to the whole uh, transformation in terms of defining different transition pathways to the future. And, and this is one of the areas where you really see the need to understand both the social sciences, the technologies and the environmental studies and environmental effects what is happening. So what we're trying to do in, in Trondheim in this area, both in, in research and education, is to understand whether the interfaces between what you could call the social technical perspective, the techno-economic perspective, and, and the environmental perspective in, in talking about future pathways. In far too many cases, pathways that describe the future uh, or possible futures have only focused on one of these dimensions, and, and that will very rarely lead to the credible implementation uh, plans. And uh, I think uh, if you look at it from this perspective and, and combine that with demonstrations and innovation ecosystems, uh, you could get credible energy transition strategies. So we call these pictures the key to the future, and it involves uh, all these important dimensions with technologies, the social technical perspective, and the environmental perspective. And uh, if you go back a little bit to these uh, potential disruptions, which are some among many that I mentioned in the beginning, negative emissions, uh, hydrogen and uh, offshore wind. Well, what is joint for, for all of these is that uh, if you want to be successful in implementing those, you need the social engagement, you need to be able to hand, handle conflicts of interests, uh, you need to understand how to get the citizens to take ownership to these transition processes. And, and you need to leave this notion about acceptance. Uh, it's not uh, it's not the, the citizens that will accept technologies pushed upon them. It will be a pull for the technologies that are going to win, we think. Uh, you need disruptive business models because some of these old business models will be replaced. You need to build new markets and new market design. Uh, you need to have law and regulation that's suitable to adapt to this new situation and, and could also promote and speed up and accelerate these innovations. And, and I think our ability to do sustainable industrial scale up is, is um, critical. If you look at the offshore wind industry, for example, I think at the moment there's approximately 
one gigawatt of offshore wind being built in the North Sea every year, probably if you're going to be successful in the transition to, to a zero emission society in Europe, probably that needs to be increased tenfold. And how can we do that and still be sustainable? Uh, and, and that's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, it would need cross-border corporations to facilitate such uh, accelerated uh, actions. And I think the whole innovation ecosystems need to, 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 to a larger degree include what the previous speaker mentioned also the social innovations and um, and and the understanding of how technological and social innovations go go hand in hand